live. Welcome <laughs> back to 24 Hours Check-In. My name is Aubrey Mintz, and I am here today with special guest Mike Roberts. Hey, Michael everybody. Roberts, how are you? Good. I'm great. How are you, Aubrey? I am you good. good. You look strong. You, you look, look very, Your hair looks great. COVID has done COVID been hair. Yeah. COVID hair. I will show off my COVID hair. It's late at night, so we can uh, get a little crazy here. Well, it's ponytail time. Ponytail time. P-tail. <laughs> um, this is check-in number... Where are we? Three. Um, and we will have our um, America's East teams checking in and watching. <laughs> and um, um, folks, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to talk to Mike Roberts. He's going to tell us about uh, a few things and some tips and tricks for you, where you're at right now, and start thinking about questions you'd want to ask Mike, and you'll have a chance to type in those questions into the chat, and um, we'll go through as many as we can, and then um, we'll say goodbye to Mike, and then we'll do a check-in <laughs> where you can look at, uh, we can look at the Facebook, see what you're posting, and we just want to hear from you, make sure you're still around and doing okay, and... Uh, <laughs> Um, we just we wish you all well. So here we go with Mike Roberts. Mike is hey. a classically trained animation director and storyboard artist who has worked in Toronto, New York, London before settling down to Los Angeles, where he currently lives. He started working in the commercials and music video business uh, as a director, working on brands like Kentucky Fried Chicken, Honda <laughs> and Fandango. Since then, yeah. Mike has directed episodes of BoJack Horseman. He also directed the iconic opening credits, folks. That's Mike, right here. Um, he directed uh, F is for Family and Trip Tank. Recently, Mike has directed several animated pilots and serves as supervising director for the comedic animated space opera series Final Space on TBS. He is also the creator of the John Cena, Kat Dennings YouTube TV premium animated comedy series, Dallas and Robo. Welcome, Mike, John, Robert. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I only did season one of Final Space. My friend, uh, my good friend and talented guy, Ben Bajelajak, took over on season two and three. So he's doing the better seasons. I just did the one that I ruined the first season. You did the original. You were the pioneer. <laughs> that was a fun show to make. Well, you're a fun guy. And to what we're going to do here, and I meant Mushroom. And what we're going to do the, here... Mushroom poster right behind me. Never mind. Sorry. Okay. We're going on a Canadian tangent. Mike is Canadian. Canadian and uh, as I am. Um, so, um, folks, it is now uh, 11 p.m. on our side of the world. And you are now, what is that? Four, seven hours? You're seven hours in. And uh, <laughs> boy, I know you're tired and you're starting to feel it. Hopefully, everyone has an idea that they're pretty solid with at this point. Maybe you're doing some, some like, you know, last-minute adjustments, but hopefully you've seen an animatic. You see the timing of your film a little bit, and you're starting to design a little bit, hopefully. Production design backgrounds maybe have been started. Maybe even animation tests. I don't know. It's crazy. But um, what we're going to talk to Mike about is how you should think right now about being smart with your decisions about how to go forward, knowing that you're going to get more and more tired. So, Michael. Oh, some are starting animating. That sounds, that's awesome. Some are probably starting animating. What, okay, if you were in a team right now, yeah. and you, ha you feel pretty good about your story, uh -huh. and um, you're starting to think about designs, and you already have people that can start animating, how would you start tackling, say, a scene right now like would you go for the meaty scene a light scene or what what do you think well that's a yeah you have to keep your momentum up right so i would say like you have to have a plan for the hard stuff like know you're gonna get through it if you leave that till the end you can all it's it's like pick the things that you know you won't hate yourself for doing at the end so if there's some big epic thing that's going to take a lot of energy and a lot of momentum get that out of the way first but i would say even before that especially if you're just starting animating, now's the time to make sure that your poses are strong in the animatic. So like when you're looking at your animatic, it should feel like you're hitting all your keyframes um, or at least the important moments, you know, it depends on the style, obviously. Like 
<laughs> everybody's doing completely different style. If you're doing stop motion, you don't have to worry so much about the drawings, but you'd really feel like you can watch the animatic and feel like you got a plan because there's going to be a point where you're on ro you're on remote control. It's just autopilot. So the better your animatic is, the better the timing is, the better the poses is, the more you're going to be at, you know, tomorrow at this time, like just like getting through it. If the animatic's strong, then you know you have a roadmap. So if there's parts of it where you're like, I'm not sure if this is working, now's the time to get it working when your brain still works. Yeah, because <laughs> ultimately you could have like a really, really nice animatic that you could actually hand in as your finished film, yep. right? Yep. So it's absolutely like absolutely better to see a half finished animatic than bad animation. Right, exactly. Um, and what about production design? What kind of advice do you, would you give for that? Well, it, yeah, that's a good one because, like, you always, you know, it's, in, it's it's a hundred percent across the board. Like the reason, maybe everyone knows this already, but the reason animation is getting more complex is because the tools are making it easier. So you have to pick a, I mean, for TV and whatever, but you have to pick a medium or a look that you can pull off. So if if you want to classically animate this thing, simple characters, as simple simple as possible. If you're going to do 3D, what can what style can you build? really quickly you know um i'd again i'd rather see a funny short about two cubes shaking back and forth than like an overwrought cg that's just one model and no backgrounds and doesn't have good story you know like it's like uh early pixar shorts you know is it's yeah. doable in this time frame given the tools we have now um but if it's drawing like if you're going to do motion graphics any of that stuff just simple again stuff that's not going to kill you to do when you're at the 75% mark and half asleep, what can you keep doing once you're run out of gas? Yeah, and I guess it's also know your strengths as well. So if yeah. you know that you're a pretty decent animator and you're comfortable with the scene when you're super tired, it's fine. But if you're trying out new things, probably better to get them started sooner. <laughs> yeah, I would say don't try anything you haven't at least tried before. And, and that's, you know, this is the time to experiment, but it's not the time to like pick up a new piece of software. Right. Zero. Don't do that. <laughs> I say this as someone who like taught themselves to use Blender like starting in April. So like I can't really say anything. I'm the worst for like I think I'll do a shot for a job that's due next week and a new piece of software. So I really shouldn't talk. Yeah, you're you're good at that. You know, the the work that I see you do, you kind of like I'm gonna try this. And then, you know, <laughs> a day a day later it's like this phenomenal thing as if you've been doing it forever. So you know, there's sweating, looking for YouTube tutorials. <laughs> but there's probably people out there, you know, in this contest that can handle that kind of stuff. But, you know, as we get into the 12th, 13th hour, you start to go slow. No, that's right. It's planning for the end. Don't you're, you're fine now. It's the illusion of, of uh, <laughs> the illusion of ability right now. This is the right. salad days. And you've judged uh, these films before. So you see kind of the range of stuff. Can you say anything Spring about versus um, Marathon? That's right. Spring versus Marathon. Oh, she said Sprint versus Marathon. I totally agree. Yes, Sprint. Um, can you tell us anything about like the films that you felt were more successful and the ingredients they might have had? Well, there's a lot of... Okay, I'll, I'll start with the positive. The funny ones always, 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 always are the best. And they don't have to be like hilarious, but they have to like think of like... Um, funny in like a Wes Anderson kind of way you know it can be like ironic something with a light tone you know like Guardians of the Galaxy beats Justice League you know it's the it's the like it's the the things that are buoyant make you want to watch and even when they're so short like 30 seconds is 100 years if it's not if it's not funny if it's not buoyant so I would avoid melodrama anything that feels maudlin you know what I mean like if we're gonna like do a deep dive into the explorations of themes of death and you know, existential dread might be something that you also get a little tired of in the thirteenth hour. The theme um, is the theme is about the pandemic, so it will it may have some tones. But if you can't find comedy in this <laughs> absurd world that we are living in, then you are not enjoying yourself. I don't mind. I don't mind intensity. I don't mind drama. It just it has to be alive. You know, it can't be you know maudlin, right? Like the difference between drama and maudlin. What's yeah. the What's submod? Modlin is the like over the top, hard to take drama. Anyway, what's the one that's good? The one that's yeah, good. It, the one it, that's good. It could be poignant. I think. I think there could be poignant some poignancy. Yeah. Like 
you know, I'm thinking about some of the winners from the last couple of years. Not all of them were comedy. Like, I think there were some that, that struck a chord, um, but they weren't overly complicated, you know? Like, I yeah. think there were some that were just had a strong image, like a strong tone or strong emotion mm-hmm. to them. Um, and maybe they look cool, too. But, um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's I, I, true. Yeah. I, I should, I, I'll clear it up then. I should say that it should have a strong theme that, that's sort of like a, a, an idea for the audience to glom onto. Like, if there's no theme, if there's no idea, then just forget it. It's just, you know, like, it has to be something that resonates... I guess that's why they say write what you know, right? It should be something that uh, something that means something to you. It shouldn't you shouldn't be tugging at the heartstrings? It should be uh, expressing yourself. Right. Well, that that would be weird in some in some definitions of that term. <laughs> but what we're trying to get at, what we're trying to get at here is, um, so you know, the fact that this is about the pandemic, and you were saying, you know, really express how you feel and your experience of it as opposed to trying to tell what you think the experience is um yeah i think the good thing is that everyone's in different areas and different regions around the world so everyone really did have a different experience of this pandemic sure yeah, yeah. so i'm really interested to see what their you know their realities are what was that i saw someone was saying it's hard to be funny during the pandemic I'm like that's that's very true Oh, they, oh, this is from the chat. Yeah, I think so. Is that what you're? Is that what you're writing up there, Christina? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was one of the students wrote that. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, well, but that's the thing. Like, I mean, you know, I I have a really dark sense of humor, you know, and sometimes maybe maybe that's why I try to bring up the Wes Anderson of it all. Like his movies aren't comedies all the time, you know, but there is always like a wink. There's always like a smirk, you know. Yeah, I mean, you can you can do comedy and it the honesty of it beneath the comedy is really sad, you know? Yeah, sure. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of like the graduate. Um, yep. There's some really f- great funny scenes in it, but ultimately it's about this guy whose parents are oppressing him so much. He's drowning. Right. Which isn't yep. funny at all, but the way they tell the story makes you like laugh because it's true. You know? Well, and to get, you know, it's, it's, yeah, for sure. Cause the other thing I was going to say is maybe like another way to look at it is too, is when we're talking about completion earlier about the animatic, even in how, how, how long are they supposed to be? Is there a time? 30, 30 seconds. 30 not, seconds. Okay. Not a so. second over. So even in 30 seconds, make sure you have some form of a act structure, like beginning, middle, end. it sounds obvious to say, but like there also is like, you can sort of technically fail on one of these by having the best animation possible, the best storyboards possible. And then it's like beginning, middle, nothing, you know, like that's a, it'll, it'll make the best one not win to not right. have a beginning, middle end. Yeah. So then, I'd rather, yeah. Have a, yeah. No, go ahead. Sorry. I was gonna say, I'd rather have like no animation and a good soundtrack <laughs> with a good story. I probably would rate higher than one that didn't even finish, you know? Right. Cause there were some examples that we saw in the past where, the setup would might have been so great and the animation was so great and then it just it felt like the timer just stopped and they didn't yep. have time to finish and you can't you can't award it high points because you're just you yeah. don't get the whole story yeah you might as well have done a bad job right so if you're going to spend so much time on the animation the design and all that just make sure at this point all of your films are solid like you feel like there's enough time that's that's the important thing as well because it's only 30 seconds when that animatic plays, when it cuts, you know, even though you know the story and you could probably hold on that end frame with your team, the judges aren't going to see the anything after that end frame. So yeah. wherever it cuts, it cuts. So you got to watch it as if you have fresh eyes. Well, that's like, I mean, the, the biggest lesson I've learned in the, in the edit suite is if it's not good in the animatic, it's not going to be good in color. It just doesn't fix anything. You know, it, it might make things... It gives you the wow. Like, you'll go you'll say, hey, that was great, and now I'm saying, wow, that's all you ever get. You never get, it wasn't good, and now it's better. It doesn't happen. If your animatic's not good, your movie's not good, your show's not good. So if it should feel like your animatic's good at this point. And what about, like, sound and music? How much importance should they put there, and when should they start sourcing that stuff? Uh, well, that uh, music and sound have to help your edit, right? So another thing that will, another piece of this animatic is is one of the things that makes TV production, and they don't do it as much with features, but um, one of the things that makes TV production so doable 
is that you have this kind of guide track of audio. So you can hear your voice is cut and your music cut. And what it does is it gives you an idea of your pacing. So like, I think in 30 seconds, it's really smart to have an idea of some little chunk of music, not because you need the music, like obviously you need it for tone, maybe for pacing, but the music gives you a pendulum. It gives you like a metronome. Um, and that metronome tells you when the cuts can come in. So you're not like futzing with like empty space. You know, music is a really, really great way to go. What's the rhythm of this piece? Like, for example, if it's sad and you pay a slow, play a slow piece of music, now you know what your edit, your edit timing is. You know, if it's fun and upbeat and you put a piece of fun music in there, you're gonna even if you don't put the music in at the end, you just take it out. It still it has a a pacing that will keep the momentum up. And those kinds of things you'd be surprised. Like people cut to temp music all the time that they don't end up using. You just you need anything you can get to keep the momentum of the feeling of the piece up is really important. I was listening to Brian De Palma talk the other day, actually, about this. Um, and awesome. He, yeah, and he hired um, uh, Herman, Bernard Herman, to do the um, music. <laughs> and I, I think it was his last film that he did before he passed away. But he put a temp track of Herman's, you know, Hitchcock work on, yeah. on his, like, on his edit. And Herman came into the sound room. And he's and then the first note, he's like, turn it off, turn it off. I don't want to hear it. He didn't want to be influenced at all. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> but some some composers are great with it. They want to hear what you had in mind. But but I mean, I, I think I, if you have a rhythm in your stuff, it doesn't matter what the music is. You know, like that's, I think, the main thing. Like you, he would watch it and go, oh, yeah, OK, I get a rhythm for this thing. And he would know that it was cut to music. Yeah, totally. Um, we were talking about, do we have some chat questions, Christina? I think we do. Okay. Great. Question for Mike. Uh, what do you usually do when animating under a tight time constraint? Well, I think, it, it, well, first of all, I would, I would say, like, get your keyframes down. You know, like, again, I'd rather have the animation on eights with nice keys than on twos with bad keys. You know, flowy, flowy animation is, like, think about gorillas, you know. How, like, I was watching the new gorillas today. Um, with the Elton John thing, you see, it was actually pretty good. Those, what, the, they've been the, doing the animated of, animated music videos. Yeah, it's it's like okay. Elton John guest starred on the new Gorillas thing, and the, they did Elton John like a Jamie Hewlett caricature of Elton John. It's pretty good playing at a piano, and uh, but I mean, if you look at it, it's literally a mouth moving, and they even x like rotating the head symbol. So like it's very like in modern techniques, mouth is animated exquisitely, and it's just the shoulder comes up when the music changes. The shoulder comes down when the music changes. It's like ultra simple, so little animation. But I'd way rather see that than if it was on twos, like shaky lines going off model, bleh, big mush pile. I would say like just keep. And the, the other thing, another thing to keep your momentum up, right? If you're looking at 30 seconds of animation, you're probably going to be putting it in chunks of five seconds, 10 seconds, one second. Go in terms of what you can take a bite of. And if you like, if you're if you're feeling in the weeds, move on to the next shot. Move on to the next shot. Go through and just key out your whole thing. Then go back and start and do a little bit more. Do a little bit more. Don't go frame by frame ever. And there's a temptation with 30 seconds just to go frame by frame. But you'll be so much happier with it if you could keep watching it down. Because the the secret to animation, and this, the reason why even the worst animated feature is usually pretty structurally all right is because they watch it over and over and over. And even if their script sucks and this characters are bullshit, they, they know, they've watched it so many times that the, the pacing like fixes itself to a certain degree. I mean, it's, it's not always going to be a winner, but that's why animation has so like a much higher hit rate for animated features than like regular movies. Um, fewer made, more successes, I would say. Um, because of that, they just watch it over and over and over, and they get an idea of how complete it is at any given moment, and then throw it out and start again if it's not working. But maybe right. we don't have, you guys don't have the ability to do that. I mean, I think animators are so used to working down to the minutia and the frame mm -hmm. that uh, we have so much control over our films, so we have to watch it over and over as well, you know? Yeah, I'll say I've never been done early. You know, right. like I've, 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 I've never, I, I'm, not, I'm good at not missing deadlines. But I've never been done early. There's always the, the the amount of work you do expands to fill a vacuum. You'll find a way to like hand it in five minutes before it's due. Yeah, just one more thing. Wait. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. Move that finger. Yeah. Never finished. I don't know if that was an actual answer. I felt like I was just uh, making noise, like a horn honking. 
That was awesome. <laughs> uh, someone wants to know how do you keep working while you're asleep, Alana J. <laughs> <laughs> well, like coffee and then whatever else. <laughs> Uh, I think, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, like, I feel like with, you know, me and Aubrey had the Sheridan experience and I feel like so much of that was uh, all nighters, you know, not healthy. It was stupid. I remember in third year, me and this other guy, Nate Steffen had a pact where we were going to do business hours because it was getting so unreasonable. So we thought if we do business hours, we'll actually get more done. So, and it wasn't quite business hours. It was nine till nine. That was our day. And you, could, you had to go home and sleep. And uh, we got way more done that way. So I think like if you're really tired, set an alarm, take 10 minutes, just do it. You yeah. know, like you'd be better off with a 10 minute nap. Like 20 minutes is that like power nap, like. Yeah, whatever that refresh. is. Refresh. Yeah, totally. Uh, if Aaron is tired, wants to know how do you go about choosing sounds for a music project or sounds or music for a project like this? So you already talked about like blocking it in, but mm -hmm. any. I think it's always the always that I got to think about tone and the theme, right? Like if like sound effects are important, they're easy. Like you need a drill, just listen to a bunch of drill sound effects. You need a smack, listen to a bunch of smack sound effects. I don't. Do you have, they have libraries? How are you guys doing it? Uh, it's up to them. Whatever they find. Well, here here's a top tip: get one of those YouTube downloaders, and there are tons of free music and sound effects and and uh, on YouTube that you can rip. And I think there's obviously rights issues that you probably have to contend with, but stuff, stuff like sound effects, um, there's tons and tons and tons. Anything you want to type in, just go sound effect of a thing and then rip it from YouTube. That's like a super fast way to like bolster your library. Um, and then uh, uh, with music, yeah, can they use licensed music? That's a good question. I, 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 I tell them to, yeah, to try and find royalty free. Just that we, we don't want it being pulled down. Yeah, right. Okay, okay. So then I think the most important thing is think tone. What do you want? Like, oh, you know, the, the, the way I always try to explain, it, like it works for acting. It works, you know, when you're, when you're, um, anything you want to do, don't, don't do the literal, do the thought. So the, the word I, I'm constantly, uh, giving animators and, and board artists, especially because most of the people I interact with are board artists. They always want to act the word, you know, the amount of times you see a character go, no, I'm tired, you know, like they, they do something, look, look over there, like all the literal stuff that people do in acting never works. It's always B level. You, you hear the word and then what's the thought? So if a character's angry, if it's like, I'm tired, but what are you tired of? You know what I mean? I want to get out of here. So it's like, I'm tired, you know, look around, like think about what the body language of what the thought is, you know, um, if you're angry with someone and you're saying something, it's so much more, that's why a lot of these animation contests and a lot of film festivals will give like a script the contests and then you have to do a different plot for the one script you're not you're not doing like a little script right you're doing theme yeah but that's what makes it so interesting like you can make the thoughts that come into your head not relate to the words and have it work so well so i would say like the main thing is always be thinking of theme and and that's music that's sound effects it's posing it's every everything just think about what it means not what you think it needs to literally be because literal is always less interesting sometimes you got to be literal but it's always less interesting than um, making an interesting choice. So with music too, think about something that's like maybe someone, don't pick something any, don't pick something that someone is gonna definitely do if they were in your shoes. Cause that's what I will say, anytime you copy someone, you're, or anytime you do something, that's why the zeitgeist is so hard to chase. If you make a joke that's very now, someone else is making that joke right now too. And, if, and you'll see that same joke and you'll feel like a cliche. So try to pick pieces of music that like, you know, pick uh, pick something from like the, you know, uh, BBC uh, uh, um, polyphonic, you know, that whole like weird 70s, 60s place. There's tons of that stuff on YouTube or like look up some like 70s, like um, experimental uh, 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 electronic music, you know, like pick some pick the kind of stuff that represents your story, but is not no one else is going to have it. It'll, it'll inspire you to find something new. Now every 24 hours film is going to have 70s electronic music. Thanks, Mike. Man, there's this there's this video <laughs> called Krumar that I'm obsessed with, and it's like a baby playing. It's like a baby uh, doll with like a pot on its head playing a keyboard, and it's uh, oh God, was it John Jacques Perez, the artist? And it's called Krumar. Look it up. It's it, oh, that's what. If you need a boost and you're running out of coffee, look up Krumar, like C R U M A R, and then. And you'll see it. It's this terrifying baby toy doll face. And then that's your energy boost 
to get you the next 45 minutes of energy. It'll mess you up. <laughs> That's great. Other other questions, Christina? Um, I don't see any other questions. We did have some Gorillaz fans of that music video. When you, oh, uh, man, it's so good, right? It, for sure. I love Gorillaz. Super cool. Uh, music and animation. Uh, we had a bunch of teams checking in. I don't know if I'm going to say names until after we tell Mike to shoo, but do you guys want to <laughs> hear about the stages that people are at right now? Or Sure. Uh, I guess last call for questions in the chat, guys. Um, but let's see. Going back up to the top, we have teams who are in animation production, people who are still alive, uh, <laughs> Animation production. Right. Uh, let's see, lots of people Vince checking in from all over, not just the East Coast. Uh, we had some some animators make a connection on YouTube. Someone realized they were following someone else's channel. It's like, oh hey, I follow your channel. I love your work. Um, networking, networking. We got some people starting rough animation and cleaning up layouts. Uh, seems like people are lightning speeds here. Uh, <laughs> Animating, cleanup, line art, and backgrounds are underway. Uh, what would you say about level of finish, Mike? Like, is it better that the whole film is just consistent, or is it better to have a couple scenes that look so good, and then others that may not get to that level? I'd say, like, like um, that, that's what I was saying about, like, going back and doing passes, you know? Like, I'd rather see... A color card in the background and and telling the story than a beautiful background if it's the only one in it you just don't want every time you make a every time you make a choice and it doesn't seem like the right choice you're making the audience go i'm not going to pay attention anymore it's like a brain shutter offer so if you if you come in and it's card like 30 seconds and it's blue card green card pink card and it just keeps showing cards you're gonna go okay this person's trying to tell me a story but if you say a pink card and then a detailed background and then a blue card, you're like, wait, wait, what's happening? So I think you have to like, you have to, it has to look like all your choices are very deliberate. So that's like a bit abstract, but that's a way to think about it. You know, the more, everything should look finished in the moment. And any, like, think about when you're a few hours from being done, what if someone took it away from you right now? Would they understand what it was? And if you're a few hours away and you don't understand what it is, you're probably not gonna finish on time. Yeah, and it's a, a good point to add to that is if you have someone always editing, basically everything that's created, you add to the reel. That way your reel, like Mike was saying, is on layers is getting better and better. But yeah. if someone pulled it away from you, you still have that reel with the latest stuff. So, so you see. Yes, yes. You want to make sure. And I would just keep exporting. Like every couple hours, export something. That way you've got a version of your film exported as well. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. Did Ben say something there? I thought I didn't. I maybe. Yeah, you said. Yeah, we had a question about how do you balance the style of the characters and the backgrounds, kind of on related to what you're just talking about. Well, I think like you want to make sure that the, the backgrounds are in some ways are easier, right? Because the, a lot of the things that people do as a mistake is they overcomplicate the background and then block the composition. So you should always think about where your character is going to be in the frame, and that actually helps you with animation, right? So if you're in a close-up and you give out someone, okay, do a background for this close-up, and then like half the screen's filled with a drawing of a head, and you've spent time on what's behind the head, you're wasting your time. So you should always think about like this, almost like a wreath around your action. So if it's a person walking down the street, remember they're gonna be walking past that part of it and make sure that, that it's it's pretty and it works, but that like you're saving the, the detail for the things you need to see. So if they're walking from one side to the next, put the things where you need them to be. They're going from here to here. Don't spend time worrying about the middle details. Don't do the second floor super detail. Just just get the enough story into the background. Because I've, I've had conversations with backgrounds artists on series where you're like, background is story. You know, like make your background to tell a story. If you're just making a cool street, you're gonna fail half the time. You know, you gotta make this thing the thing that it needs to be for the story. So I would say like the, the, the choice is like don't overcomplicate it. Do less. Do the bare minimum comp do the do the maximum compositionally and then decide what the minimum is um, with art. You know, what's the minimum you can do to, to do this thing for speed? But compositionally, do hundred and ten percent. Yeah, and the danger with working with a team, if you're by yourself too much, 
you know, the background artist would start filling in details without talking to the animator. So passing it back and forth, if the animator does a super rough pass, gives it to the background artist, then they can yep. see the path that Mike was just talking about and then plan your design, your framing elements basically around that. Well, and that goes back to the animatic too, right? Like, let's say you have five backgrounds and two are the same. You literally use those two backgrounds in your animatic so that if someone picks up that shot later when someone's napping, the backgrounds aren't redrawn by mistake because that happens all the time when you're moving fast with TV, especially. You'll do like the same shot. It's a little bit different. They redraw it by mistake. Now you've got two of the same background and you've wasted time. So like, think about it, think about it being as efficient as possible. And that's why, that's why they put backgrounds in animatics a lot of the time. It's just so people have a guide to go by. Um, so always be making, yeah, like every single, like always be making those choices based on um, uh, what, what you, what will save you time later. You know, do the work now so it saves you the time later. But simplify. Don't do, don't do zippers, man. Take the zippers off characters. Don't do T-shirts with designs on them. Don't do, you know what I mean? Don't, like, get into the, like, anime eyes with, like, 500 little specific light reflected things in them. You know, unless you have, that can be a great gag. It's like Ren and Snippy. Think about, like, the way they would punch in on something and it's a painting. You know, that's a really smart choice. And they use it as almost like a visual gag. So... Um, I said gag just as you cough. <laughs> the, um, the, um, the, it's like a, uh, it's like a visual gag to have, um, the style change, you know, so you can do that kind of stuff. Like maybe one of your jokes is the style change. And that was really funny on Rin Stimpy, um, to have it be like a booger up close. You know what I mean? Yeah. So anyway. Nice. Anything else, Christina, on the chat? Everybody's working. It's good. There are variously at stages animation production, rough animation, inking. Wow. All kinds of different stages. Well, Mike, this has been invaluable. I think I'll go back and watch this for my own productions. You've been uh, <laughs> incredibly insightful. I really appreciate it. Well, well thanks for having me. Good luck, everybody. 